Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointing Not Sharp. Today we're discussing how to sell bayonets or my tips for selling bayonets. Now this is the final installment of a three-part series I've done where I've covered uh, how to value bayonets, uh, how to buy bayonets and now how to sell bayonets. And much like the other two videos, step one is research. Uh, before you go selling anything, you have to understand exactly what you have and what it's worth. And the best way to research is definitely going to be reference books like this one here. However, I understand a lot of people don't have access to uh, really good resources like this. So you can also jump online and even the... Um, like the Facebook collector groups on Facebook are fantastic for identifying them and telling you what you have. But it's up to you to figure out uh, what it's worth. Um, those people generally aren't happy to do valuations. And my valuation video really sort of covers off um, how to figure out a value. But research is key. You don't want to get ripped off. You don't want to have some priceless piece and sell it for next to nothing. Um, a smaller scale example of that is this one here. It's a Lithgow P1907 I bought for 300 bucks in New Zealand. Um, I bought it from a shop, a military shop, a guy who really should have known what he had. If he had looked closer, he would have realized it was an incredibly scarce example made in 1927 with transitional markings. Um, I paid 300, I would have happily paid five, 600. If he had done a little bit of research, I probably would have been able to figure that out. You should also definitely consider provenance. So provenance is a story that a particular artifact or item tells, and that usually has to be evidenced through some kind of documentation or markings. So an example of provenance, uh, this isn't a fantastic example, but that this is a New Zealand bayonet. We know this through the New Zealand markings. If I had documentation for the specific soldier that had this, or say it's a battlefield pickup like this one here and other documentation of the soldier that brought it back to Australia, that would be provenance and that would make the item far more desirable and drive up the price. And if you're claiming provenance, be expected that you do have to back it up because if you're expecting someone to pay a lot more money for an item, they're gonna want some kind of uh, evidence, whether that's documentation, photos. My second point is presentation. Now, you want to clean bayonets up. Um, I've got a cleaning video again, check that out. So get all the grease and the cosmoline and the dirt off them, but don't damage them. Don't sand them, don't grind them, don't sharpen them, don't do anything silly like that. Just clean them and make them look presentable. Maybe even give them a little bit of an oil. And once you've got them in a pretty good condition, then you want to take really good quality photographs. So. You want to get overall photographs so people understand what they're looking at, as well as really close-up photographs, let's see if we can get this, of all of the markings. And what I recommend, if you can, if you have unique markings that um, you can't necessarily read like we have here, you can even include photographs from reference books depicting what the markings mean. That's something I've seen a couple of sellers do and it, it just looks absolutely fantastic when it's well presented. But um, good lighting, good cameras, and plenty of photos with all of the details that uh, serious buyers are going to wanna see. The next point is timing. Now, I'll use eBay as an example because that's a resource that pretty much everyone has access to and most people are familiar with. So, I've sold a lot of things on eBay and I've found that most of my sales tend to happen at the same time or I receive most of the bids at the same time and that's usually Sunday evening. So when I have bayonets up that are buy it, uh, buy it now or bidding, I receive my bids or make sales for buy it nows on the Sunday evening and that's something I've noticed. So when I make auctions, I try to make sure that those auctions finish on Sunday evening. It's not necessarily going to be the same everywhere, but um, look for little trends like that. I highly recommend them, as well as major events. So I've been sitting on this one here for quite a few months because here in Australia, we have Anzac Day, which is a uh, day of remembrance for fallen soldiers uh, here in Australia, coming up in April. And um, the week leading up to Anzac Day and even a few days after it, the prices of bayonets on eBay, it shoots up because there's not many on there they all sell out and everyone is you know, 
these things are thrust into the spotlight. You, you see them. And particularly Ottoman Empire stuff, which is very relevant to Australia with their conflict in Gallipoli. Um, these are very, very sought after for a very short period of time and the value goes up. So last year I made a bit of money doing this and it's my intention this year as well. Definitely consider special events. When it comes to platforms to sell, I generally use eBay. So I'll start with online platforms. Generally, you've got like eBay and Etsy. They're the standards. They're reasonably safe to use. I've never had any issues buying or selling on eBay and I've been doing this for quite a few years. The only issue with eBay is fees, which can be really annoying. And particularly when you're selling, uh, if you've got a small margin for profit, uh, say you bought it for you know, 100 bucks and you're selling it for 120, uh, eBay might just eat up your entire profit. There might not be much left. So if you want to avoid the uh, eBay fees, you can look at buy sell pages on uh, places like Facebook or forums or all the uh, the buy sell websites, the secondhand gun sites and things like that. However, those places you do run the risk because there's less protection. There's no third party uh, dealing with everything. There's no insurance really. It's um, coming down to how much you trust a person not to screw you over. But when you're the seller, there's significantly less risk than when you're the buyer. The third option for online is uh, consignment. So if you have something really, really nice, not so much like a cheap Italian uh, BM59 worth, you know, bugger all, but if you have something a bit nicer like a Ottoman uh, Model 1890 here, you might consider consigning it to an auction. And uh, when you're looking at consigning to an auction, you wanna make sure that the auction you're sending it to has a large audience and a relevant audience. So if you're sending it to like an antique dealer auction house, you're probably not gonna put it in front of the right people and it's not gonna get a great price. But if you're looking at an auction house that deals with historical firearms and militaria, you're gonna have the right audience and they're probably gonna have a bit of insight that they can chuck into the consignment and you'll probably get a very good price. The downside with this is fees. Um, I've seen fees as high as 25% of the sale. Uh, sometimes they're included in the auction price and sometimes they're additional on top of the hammer price. So that's something to consider when dealing with auction houses. You can also consider selling uh, in person. So there's obviously private sales through word of mouth or just meeting people, uh, usually pretty safe. I've sold a couple, but it's quite difficult to find the right people. Uh, you've got a very small pool of people that you're trying to sell to and uh, generally you don't get the best prices that way. You can also take them to antique, porn, or military shops or gun shops and sell them uh, secondhand, but they need to make a decent markup and uh, buying secondhand from you is a risk to them. So they're probably gonna buy uh, at a fraction of what it's worth. So they usually offer you, you know, half to 60% of what something is worth for them to make any kind of uh, money off it for them to have it be worth their time. You can also go to gun shows, sell things at gun shows. So whether you're going to booths and you're selling things to uh, collectors who are running booths or if you're running a booth. Um, if you're running a booth, it's very time consuming. It takes days of your time. It also takes uh, a lot of your effort and you probably have to spend a bit of money to set the booth up to hire the booth um, as well. So that's something else to be considered. Now, something I didn't cover before when I was speaking about online is postage. Definitely, definitely, definitely familiarize yourself with your local postage uh, rules, regulations, what you can and can't send, and um, how to package it and the cost associated with it. Uh, you need to understand these things before you send them. Um, I wasn't great at it when I started, it's a little bit of trial and error, I lost a little bit of money, but uh, eventually I figured it out. And here in Australia, you can join like, um, get a profile on the, the postage website, the Australia Post website and actually get discounts as you send more and more items. So keep that in mind if your local country, uh, if you can uh, create an account with your local postage service and there might be scope for discounts for businesses or people making uh, multiple sales. So keep that in mind as well. Anyway guys, that's really all I can think of in regards to selling bayonets. Um, I've only sold probably 60 or 70, so I'm no master but um, I thought it'd be good information, particularly for those who come across them and don't know how to get rid of them and don't want to get completely ripped off. If you have any further points uh, or any other ideas, please feel free to comment below. I'm sure we'd all love to read what you have to say. And thanks for watching.